If you remember from the slides, I mentioned earlier that we will of course need to connect to the database and we will need to connect via connection string. And this string will be placed in appsettings.json file. So let's open this file. So let me add it and I will explain what it is and how it works. Okay, so this is my connection string that I added to this file. So I named this connection string connection strings. This is a key for the entry and the app will look for it automatically as it expects this key. I set up a default connection to a local DB, so local database server. And I assigned a name for the database in our database property. So we have a database property and the database name is going to be candy shop DB. Of course, we do not have the database yet, but this is what I plan to name it when we create one. Now we use trusted connection as this is our own local database. So we don't need any particular security for the connection here. And multiple active result sets allows us to execute multiple batches on a single connection. In our case, it's really not needed since we have a single user for our application, which is going to be, of course, you. But if there were multiple users using it at the same time, this property would come handy. So this is our connection string. Remember, connection strings is a key and the name of the connection string is default connection that sets up to local DB and connects to database called candy shop DB with trusted connection. All right, so we have a connection string and now we will have to tell our app that we actually want to use entity framework core. And we do that of course in the startup file. So let's open startup file. And this is just a simple matter of registering the service using add DB context method with our services. All this is part of the NuGet package that we installed. So here in configure services, I'm going to add a first service to be the connection to the database. So we'll use services dot, and like I mentioned, it's going to be add DB context. And we want to add this context from our app DB context class. And we need to set up a few options again. So first option we want to set up is that we want to use an SQL server. So let's create a Lambda for options and we'll create options dot use SQL server. Now this one is not recognized yet because we need to bring in namespace, which is in the entity framework core. And use SQL server needs to know what the database it needs to connect to. So we need to pass in the connection string from the app settings.json file. So as an argument here for the use SQL server, we will pass in the connection string. And as I mentioned, this file is known file to the ASP.NET Core, and it is part of a known configuration. Therefore, it is part of I configuration collection. So we need to bring it to our startup class first. So up here in our startup class, I'm going to bring in a property for I configuration. That's going to be I configuration and I'll call it configuration. And we are only going to use this property to read from it. So I'll just use get without set. And I configuration has its own namespace, of course, which is in Microsoft extensions that configuration. So we have it in our class and now of course we need to inject it into the constructor in order for us to be able to use it. So let's create a constructor and here we will pass the I configuration and I'll just call it configuration. And inside the constructor I will assign the value from our configuration argument that we pass into the constructor to our property. All right, so now we have access to the connection string in our app settings.json inside our startup class via the configuration, which is the I configuration interface. So in our use SQL server, I can now go to our configuration dot 
and here I can get the connection string. And there's actually a method called get connection string. And it needs to know what connection string I want. And if you look at it, remember connection strings is the key. That's not the name of the connection because you can have multiple connections. The one I want and the only one we created is called default connection. So that's the one that we pass in. So now we are finally set to use the entity framework core in our application. Well, sort of. There's actually still a few things that we need to take care of first. So let's do that. 